Here we are with Ready the tank. Now. How are you? Oh, good are you. We plan on doing a bit of natural hybrid feeder fishing, haven't we? Well, I brought you to Winsford Flash in Winsford. In Winsford. Enough, uh, this place is absolutely full of bream and skimmers. And one way that a, I know is really effective way of catching them is fishing a method feeder. But today I'm going to fish an hybrid feeder. 60 meters out so i'm going to run through a few little tips but to kick off it's really important that you start your session by putting a little bit of bait in because i don't just want to chuck an hybrid feeder out there and hope for the best it's not that cold yet and i'm not looking for say one fish i want to try and catch 150 breeds today brenda <laughs> that'd be nice wouldn't it <laughs> but i'm going to put in five medium bait up feeders that's a 50 gram weight on but i've actually got this is a corder carp rod. It's like one of their sample rods, big old reel, corder spot braid. This is a specific baiting up rod. And I really like to use this for putting baiting at the start because you can get out there nice and accurately because that 50 gram weight with that big feeder, there'd be quite a lot on the rod that I'm actually fishing with, that I'm trying to catch a fish with. So that's where this specific baiting up rod comes into play. You can whack it out there, empty the feeder nice and accurately. And I've got my sticks, which I'll run through in a little bit, which means that this rod and that rod will be fishing in exactly the same spot. It's almost like when you've got a pole cup on any pole, you wouldn't put 500 little pots full of a little kinder pot, would you? You put one great big pot full, and that's how what I'm going to do today. So it's a similar sort of setup. Five of these in, not putting a lot of bait in to start with, Brenda. Okay. Just a mate, this is sweet marine ground bait. Um, I love this for my bream and skimmer fishing. It's absolutely brilliant. And I've got a few of the activated coarse match pellets there from mainline matching. I'm just putting an odd one in. Not a lot, an odd dead maggot. I might put an odd bit of corn in as well. You don't want to put too many particles in, mainly ground bait, because I don't want to fill them up with food that they can actually eat. The ground bait just keeps them in a little area. And when I chuck that hybrid out with my up bait in the middle, they can't help but have that up bait. And that's my plan of attack. That's what I'm thinking, Brenda. Sounds good to me. Okay, so I'm going to put in, I've already put two in. Don't pack it too hard, that's one little tip. Don't pack too hard, because when you try and empty it out, it can be a nightmare. Just a couple of squeezes, that's enough. So let's get her out there. It's a bit windy today, Brenda. It's a bit windy as well, isn't it? Get, get him out. out of there. Boom! Perfect. Hit the lake anyway. So once it's hit the surface, clips on there. Give it a couple. Really good janks and connect. Janks? Is yeah. that a word? Janks. <laughs> tanks proper new dictionary. <laughs> janks, tanks. <laughs> Give it a proper couple of big old janks and it'll empty out. And as you can see, these feeders are really good because they come straight to the surface, which is a good indicator that you've emptied your bit out. Awesome. So, two more. That's three. Two more. Then we're going to get fishing. You mentioned distant sticks tank. You took us through it. Got a render. <laughs> you mentioned distant sticks tank. You took us through it. Of course I will. Well, like I said, when I've got two rods, one's my baiting up rod, which you've just seen, and this is my actual fishing rod, which I'll have a hook on it. <laughs> uh, I want to make sure they're on the, exactly the same spot in terms of how far out they are into the lake. And one way that you do that, 100% accurately, a lot of people do it counting the real turns and stuff like that. It's, it's not accurate enough for me. That's where the measuring sticks really come into their own. I've used them for years now, do a lot of feed fishing, wouldn't be without them. And to use them, it's super simple. All I did on that rod, I'd literally counted out 30 wraps of these measuring sticks and they're two meters apart. So that's 60 meters, good at maths, right? And I'm gonna do the exact same on this rod. I'm gonna put my feeder down in the same place on the measuring stick. So that's where I put my bait up feeder before. I'm gonna put my hybrid feeder, which I'm fishing with. Put it down there. Make sure it's like wrapped, that's a good little tip, Brenda. Make sure it's wrapped round once like that. See it? Because okay. it won't pull round then. Woo! So all I'm gonna do now, get my reel in the sort of normal position. Turn the back wind on, that's really important. Back wind on, and then wrap it round 30 times. So I'm gonna go once. I always lose count if I don't keep to a number. Okay. But you've got to keep your line tight, and to do that, you have to like almost fiddle around with your finger on the bail like that. You see it? Okay, yeah. So don't let it all go slack or anything like that, because that's going to be a nightmare for tangles. So that's 20. Nearly, nearly miscounted. Nearly <laughs> caught you out, didn't 21, I? 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 
28, 29. Right, now when you get to 30, all you have to do, kick these neat nettles out of the way. 30. Now you put your line clip on the exact same place that you're baiting up rod wards. So, just like that. Can you see, do I come a bit closer? Let's come a bit Have closer. What I'm going to do, put the line clip on. Like that. Like exact that. same place on the measuring stick. Now turn your back wind back off. So it's only can only go one way. And then all I do now, keep hold of the main line, lift my rod a bit higher, and just wind in. Easy as that. Easy peasy, and both rods will be at the exact same position. Ooh, what you say? What you say? What you say? What did she say? Ooh, what you say? Look at that. <laughs> Can't see anything, Brenda. <laughs> He's blind. So, could you talk us through your hardware for, to catch these very tricky skin bobs? Well, it's very hard. It's hard, <laughs> it's a bit hard isn't it? Very hard. <laughs> Starting with the rod choice, Brendonian. What have we got? It's upside down. It's upside an Aventus 12 foot distance feeder rod. I'm fishing 62 meters. If I were going to fish any further than this, I would use a 13 foot one. But I like the 12 foot, it's a bit softer than the 13, and in my opinion, when you've got 60 to 65 meters, perfect rod. Lovely. Real choice, I've not gone for a big massive reel, it's just a 4000 Aventus. It's perfect for, say, anything from 60 to 70 meters, that's max, to be honest. Um, but that has got it's actually an 010 sample braid on there, and the reason why I'm using braid mainline on my reel is because. I want to see indications, liners, make sure that the fish are in my peg. When you're fishing with mono, say six pound, five pound mono, you don't see a lot of indications. And when you are fishing a method feeder slash hybrid feeder like I am today, you don't need to see a lot of these liners because a lot of the time it just goes like this. But it gives me a good indication of what's going on in my peg. And plus, with an elasticated feeder, which I'm run for in a second, you don't lose any fish because I've got a 12 pound shield shock leader on there, which is actually a couple of turns on the reel when the feeder is in my like, same position as the reel like that. So it's got a full length of the rod and back down and two turns on the reel. So when I've got fish under my feet, I'm not playing them directly onto braid. I have got that shield shock leader there. Uh, the tip choice, it's got an ounce and a half. It's a new tip actually, uh, we're working on them. A new Aventus distance tip, a couple of different eye spacings and stuff like that. An ounce and a half is perfect. You don't want anything too heavy because it's going to move the feeder. Um, so that's about bang on. There's not much toe on it today, even though it's windy. Feeder choice, I've got a 42 gram medium feeder there. I haven't gone for the large one. I ain't gone for the small one, obviously, right down the middle. Um, I think this is perfect for bream and skimmers, especially when it's a bit colder like it is today. And that's got a long, white, X-safe elastic stem in there. And the reason why I've gone for a white one instead of the black one, which I usually use when I'm fishing for carp, is I'm only fishing for bream and skimmers. They don't fight that hard, and I want that little bit of cushion just to avoid any hook pulls. And the hook length itself is probably about five inches of 015 N gauge. Um, that's directly onto a little speed bead there. Just like that, if you can see it. Just like that. Yeah, I like it how it just pivots and stuff like that. I think when you're fishing with wafters, which I am today, that's really important because it doesn't move your hook length away from your feeder. And the hook choice is actually a new hook. It's a 14 feeder special eyed there. Absolutely love these hooks. We've tested them a lot throughout the year. Great when you're fishing for bream and skimmers with any anything from wafters, worms, corn, even hair, like banded maggots. That's what we've caught a few fish on before. So that's the setup. It's quite simple, pretty straightforward. But whenever I'm fishing with a hybrid feeder, the key is getting these components right. You don't want anything too undergunned. So I wouldn't use an 11 foot rod for 60 meters and vice versa, I wouldn't use a 14 foot rod for 60 meters. 12 foot bang on, this real combo. Yeah, waffled on enough. Love the setup. So then Tank, last tip of the day, you've got something you want to tell everyone, don't you? I have, it's my birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, mate. It's not really. It's all about no. loading the feeder <laughs> and how to do it properly, right? The biggest thing for me, when it gets a bit colder, the fishing's a bit harder, you don't want to overload your feeder because you don't want that much bait around your hook bait. You don't. You want to almost make it impossible for the bream and skimmers to not eat your hook bait. So you don't want anything else 
going on around your feeder. So I don't want my feeder loaded like this. Sometimes in the summer, you want to get as much bait in and around your feeder as possible to attract the fish in, the hungry, they're eating a lot of bait. But when it gets harder, a bit colder, water's clearer, scale that bait down in and around your feeder. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it. Another little quick tip as well, uh, the sweet marine I'm using today, it's actually made quite dry. I don't want it too stodgy because it won't come off the feeder properly. And what I mean by that is it won't break down nicely in and around the feeder because the water's cold, it's not going to make the ground bit and these micro pellets react the same way as it would in the summer. So it's quite dry, even the micro pellets are a little bit dry and that's important because when it gets to the bottom, I want it to stay there for like two or three minutes and then spread out, leaving my hook bit in the middle. So actually going on to the loading the feeder, what I like to do, put the first little layer on like that, say it's fully onto the hybrid, just to the, just to the top of the lip there like that. Now what I'll do, give it a couple of good firm squeezes, not too hard though, because it won't ever come out, because it's cold water, it doesn't break down quickly. So a couple of nice squeezes, so you've got a bit of bait in and around here. So you can imagine that on the bottom, the bream and skim is coming around, it's not just a hybrid and elasticated stem sat there. It'll always have an odd micro pellet, an odd bit of ground bit in and around this feeder, which is really important. Now what I'll do, place my hook bait and the wafter, whether it's maggots, you know, corn, or what today it's been a wafter, that's been the best bait. I always try and place it so my hook is facing towards the edge of the feeder like that. That's a perfect presentation, in my opinion, when you're fishing with hair rigs on hybrids like this. And now, this is really important, I just want one small layer like that protecting that hook bait and keeping it in place. And all I do now, get the palm of my hand, give it a good firm squeeze, not too much, and that's it. As you can see, not overloaded at all. And that's got a couple of benefits. One, like I said earlier, it's not got too much bait in around my hook bait, and two, it casts a lot better, it can be super accurate, which is really important when you're not fishing for a lot of fish. So that's my tips. Get her out there. Crack. Sun is setting in the sky. It's time for the tank to say goodbye. <laughs> been a great day, hasn't it? It's been really good. Fishing hasn't been easy, but we're getting into that cold spell now. The water is absolutely tap water clear. But we've had a few bites and I've enjoyed it. It's been Have really good. out with you, Brenda. It's been really good, mate. You're attached to one right now, aren't you? Final fish of the day. It's coming in. Now. The biggest thing for me today, Brenda, is what I've learned. I've had loads of liners. Oh, he's coming in. Here now. he is. Let's have a look. Oh, there look we him. go. Quite a nice size, him, isn't he? He's a good one, mate. He's got yeah. a wafter sticking out his mouth. Whoa. Lovely Lovely. Thing. What I was going to say is, I'm going to keep him there for a couple of seconds. Keep you waiting. Right. I've had loads of liners and indications, but the key is to sit on your hands. Do not, when you fish with an eyebrow or a method feeder, do not be tempted to pick up at anything that is not a positive bite, as in dragging your rod in. A couple of times today you've said to me, you said, oh, that's on, that's on, that's on. <laughs> but it's not, it's just a slow pull. It's the F1 Think, angler in me, isn't the it? The <laughs> F1 angler in you, honestly. But another thing is, don't be afraid of leaving it in there a long time. Whenever you're fishing for bream and skimmers like this, the longer you can leave the hybrid or method feeder in there, the better. Honestly, it's almost like you're boring them on to the hook. Nearly every single bite, look at that, right? That's 13 minutes, that. Nearly every bite has come after 12 minutes. Well, it's probably about 12 minutes from playing the fish. But it just shows how long you actually have to leave it in the water. A nice fish, isn't it, Brenda? It's a four pounder, isn't it? Four yeah. pound at least, isn't it? Oh. It's been a great day. It's been a very good day. Oops. Have a look at him. Let's have a look. See if he, if he Feed a special eyed. Look at that hook hold there, Brenda. Come here, baby. Let's have a look. Look at that hook hold. Upside down, but look at that. Crazy. Not losing him. No moving. Try and grab him round. Come you on. can't get your hands around him, can't you? Can't get your hands that big. <laughs> Come Lovely. here, Barry. Barry the Bream. Lovely fish to end the day. Look at Cracker. Winsford Flash, I love it. Awesome. Oh, come here, come here, come here, <laughs> come here. Gaz Lambert gave me a little tip to try this venue, so thank you very much, Gaz. Come here, he's lively, isn't he, for a <laughs> November bream? Who said right. bream don't fight? Look at that. Love it.
awesome. Pop him back. Thank you all for watching.